The people of Baltimore are, are awesome and resilient and creative and for so long have just taken matters into their own hands and that is really exciting to work with people who are ready to go. We look at neighborhoods and look to where there's high vacancies and look to see where there's opportunities for greening that could actually support neighborhood development. I work on temporary greening, measures on vacant lots, which could include just stabilization like a fence to dirt dumping. Or it could be temporary art with some planted material or green material around it just to help temporarily activate a space. Or it could be something like this which is obviously a working farm, it's a community space, it almost acts like a pocket park too, there's seating here. Greening can mean a lot of different things and I have all of those things in my toolbox. We begin with the problem and understanding of the problem we go through many, many months of research where we're talking to people, we're looking at the data, we're hearing stories, and then we start to, to synthesize it and pull out these key um, insights, things that are surprising, things that are maybe being overlooked, or moments of tension where the data is saying one thing, but then when you're actually talking to people, they feel uh, something else. That's where the design in the traditional sense of making and doing is really helpful. It's very iterative, very collaborative. You create and you put it out there and you collect feedback as you're going and you continue to revise. OpenWorks is a 34,000 square foot maker space. We're one of the largest in the country. You can work with wood, metal, digital fabrication technology, including CNC and laser cutting, 3D printing, electronics, textiles, um, and digital media, and 140 cubicle size workstations that you can rent month to month for your arts practice, to launch a small business or as a hobbyist or small nonprofit to help rebuild Baltimore's manufacturing economy from the grassroots up. The mission of the Neighborhood Design Center is to provide pro bono design assistance to low and moderate income communities. Providing equitable opportunities, improving the quality of life you know, for folks. By doing community-engaged design, they can speak directly to power, a very well-thought-out plan or a design document. Um, it gives them a different language to speak their vision in. It can be taken to their city council person to say it's time to fix up this vacant lot. Really making change and being that catalyst you know, for change. You don't want anyone to come in and say, we're going to just do this and you're going to like it. It doesn't work that way. Bringing residents into the planning process as early as possible is the most important thing. To make a place that's really going to be um, beloved and utilized on a daily basis and cared for. Um, the people that are going to be the stewards for that going forward should be present during the entire design process. We're really getting to know the people that are a part of the project. Taking the time to involve people and a lot of different people, a lot of different stakeholders in the process means that what you create is more sustainable in the long run. It's making people make connections. We're trying to build this kind of set of on-ramps to opportunity, make tools, technology, and the knowledge to use them accessible to all. Young people who start to engage with our programs as elementary schoolers can grow through middle and high school and then leverage some of these um, connections we've made with workforce development programs, colleges and universities, to kind of uh, prepare themselves for the next step. 
It's nothing like a beautiful city. Better places for people to, to enjoy and feel safe, you know, feeling healthy. Seeing residents really be able to dream a little bit and envision, but also have the funding to actually go through the project and actually implement it. I don't know what I'd be doing if I wasn't doing this. It becomes people's life's work to do this project and you're just there to make it come to life. There's a lot of trust gained and it feels, I think, great on all sides. People get this optimism that there is um, stuff in the future that can be done. Communities have a design resource and the designers can learn how to work in a different method than they might get to in their office and then bring that authentic listening back to other situations. It starts to get embedded in our places over the decades and actually changes the culture. Baltimore is going to be a great city. By my last count, there's a dozen maker spaces um, in the Baltimore region now. Per capita, I don't know of another city in America that kind of has as much as this, of this type of resource as we do. The art community is something that's unique that people probably don't know about. There's over 200 neighborhoods here. Architectural history, I think that's something that people come here and they're like, wow. It's just so flavorful. No matter what's going on around, um, and what the economic situations are or the challenges people are up against. Um, people really try to care for each other. I just hope more people take a notice of, of what we're doing here. Baltimore is at an inflection point right now. Since the unrest two years ago, we've had an enormous amount of political turnover. We have an enormous amount of development dollars pouring into the city. Is this growth for everyone? And if it's not being planned in a way that it is for everyone, how do we move the needle on that?